Good evening, church. Good evening. It is so good to see you tonight and be with you tonight. We're going to start off tonight um, with a, an announcement. You may have heard and seen, if you've been following our social media, that one of our staff members, Paige Brooks, her grandfather passed away this morning. The family believes that it's connected to coronavirus as he passed from pneumonia quickly this weekend. I'm going to ask Paige if she'll come forward. Our staff just couldn't move forward in the service tonight, and our church family would know that you couldn't either without taking time to love on her and be with her. And I know we're not social distancing right now, but there are times that we just need to come together. And so I've hugged Paige, and I think I'm the only one that has. But I want to stand with her tonight, and um, our staff is going to come forward, and my family, and we're going to gather around her and pray for her tonight. But also, today, as we were planning the service, we got quite a few texts that some of you are really going through a tough time. We have some church family that are having some severe back problems, ended up in the ER earlier today. We have friends that are up north that are struggling, that are going to have surgery this week. Quite a few of you are getting uh, down and not well, and we heard and saw your request, and so we just want to start this night in prayer, covering Paige and her family in this terrible, terrible time, but also covering you so that you know that you're not alone, and Church of God Sarasota is with you and praying for you. I've asked Laura, our front door minister, if she will voice this prayer for us tonight. Oh God, we just thank you for this body of believers, God, and we thank you for the body of believers all over the world. Lord, I just ask right now that you would give Paige a certain peace, God, that you give the entire Adcock family a certain peace, Lord, a comfort that only you can bring. God, as we grieve and as we pray and as we plead, Lord, we just ask that you would continuously bring a certain hope. God, a hope that truly only you can bring, that your son on the cross can bring, that your resurrected son can bring. So God, as we worship tonight, as we hear an incredible message, God, as we lean into you and press into you, Lord, just continuously be our hope, God. Be our anchor for our soul and continuously be our best friend and our savior and our redeemer. We love you, God. We ask that you would be with every single person struggling tonight, God. Every person in pain, Lord, would you be their comforter, God, and would you be with our page tonight. We love you, Lord. In your holy and precious son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. As we take time to move into our service, join us with these hymns of peace and comfort and strength.
faithfulness. We want to welcome you tonight to Church of God Sarasota Live. My name is Eric. My wife Marcia and I are the co-pastors here. And we hope that tonight's service truly will be an encouragement to you and a blessing to you. As last week, if you have internet problems or the feed goes out, we want you to know that we re we're recording this service, so we'll post it afterwards for you. Tonight, we really want to focus on the faithfulness, the love, and the promises of God. Amen. Even in a time like this, we know that we can always stand firm mm -hmm. on God. On his promises, they're always true. On his faithfulness mm -hmm. and his unending love for us. Yes. I want to read from Romans 8 real quickly for us tonight as we prepare to worship. This is what it says. What then shall we say in response to these things? And I just want to encourage each of us to really claim and and grab this tonight as true. It is true. If God is for us, who can be against us? Amen. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. Who shall separate us from the love of God through Christ Jesus? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? Well, the answer is, no, nothing. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Amen. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, nor any powers, nor the height or depth or anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God Amen. that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Tonight, as we claim and really Grab on to the love of God. We want together with you to worship God and raise a hallelujah. Amen. Amen.
the world, all across the country, as we are joining, Lord, your body, your family of God, we worship your goodness. No matter what is happening, Lord, in this world, we know that that is true, that you are still good, and your word is true. So I pray that as Pastor Marsha comes and shares the word that you've placed in her heart, her heart, Lord, that you will truly just prepare us to receive it, Lord, and to hear your voice tonight. Amen. We worship you, we love you, and we pray this all in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you, worship team. Man, I miss my church. I miss my people. And if you are out there watching right now, I just want you to know that we miss you and we love you. We can't wait to wrap our arms around you and sing these songs with hands lifted high together. But for those of you that aren't part of our typical church family here at Church of God Sarasota, we'd love to have you here, too. So thank you for tuning in. And I pray that when this is over, that you'll just find someone and hug them. <laughs> I don't know about you, but this social distancing is hard for huggers like me and like my dad, okay? And so it's hard for us, but we get it and we're honoring. But man, I can't wait to be with you. We can't Amen. wait to be with you. Amen. Every Sunday night that we do these broadcasts, as long as we can continue to do this in this format, um, I want to bring a song for the children because a lot of our church family here have littles in their home. And so I've been bringing a childhood song the last two Sundays, and I'm going to do one again tonight. So for any child children that are out there watching or any families that have children with them, you'll recognize this song. And tonight's message is coming from this song that goes like this. My God is so big, so strong, and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big. So strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. And that song has stuck with me since I was a little, little girl at VBS. 
And we taught it to our children this past summer at what we call VBX. And so I learned that as a kid and I've never forgotten it. And what's interesting is all through my life, it's come back into my mind. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. And we even took it to Mexico with us and to mission trips that we've done around the world, really, and countries. And, and so when we're sitting there with children from another country and we're teaching it to them in their language, it's so fun to watch them get the words and sing it and do the motions. And I can't help but wonder and pray that those children and those families are sitting in their homes right now knowing that God is so big, He is so strong, and He is so mighty. Because not just because we taught them that song, but that week we invited them into a relationship with that big, strong, mighty God. And so I pray that those words will ring in their hearts. Mm -hmm. Laura, who prayed earlier, her brother is in South Korea. Hi, James. We miss you. We hope that you're well. And that's one of the songs that we sang over him as he headed to, to Korea to do his time with the Fulbright Scholarship and that he's over there teaching English and, and we just miss him. But that's one of the songs we prayed over him and sung over him. And I know that there's been times in this past year for James that he's brought that song back up in his heart that God is so big Amen. and so strong. And we're praying that James is going to get home soon. So if you'll join us in praying for that too, we'd appreciate it. But we know, James, no matter what, that God is so big and so strong and so mighty. Amen. And we'll see you soon, I believe. Amen. But as I step into our message tonight, I wanted that song to kind of frame it. And I've been thinking about God being so big and so strong and so mighty. And I thought when something is so big, you kind of can't miss it. So when something is big, you really can't miss it unless you're just not looking for it. Or maybe you're looking the other direction, such as this luggage cart. It's pretty big. It's pretty bulky. But let's say if I'm looking this direction, I don't see it. I can't see it. Mm -hmm. But when I start thinking, okay, there's something big in the room. Oh, there's a luggage cart in the room. Where is it? Oh, it's right there. And it's so big. I can't miss it. It's like that with God. I have been in my house for the most part the last couple weeks, as have you, but it doesn't take much to just look around and see God. Yeah. For instance, have you opened your windows? I know some in the north are struggling with opening your windows, but have you seen a few leaves on a tree or have you seen a bird coming back from the south or maybe have you seen a bud? I don't know, down here, we can open our windows and we can hear the birds chirping. Or we can see the sun shining. Mm -hmm. It doesn't take long to see God. We don't even have to really go, oh, let me turn around and see him. For instance, the other day, a friend of ours posted this on Facebook. She's out in her yard. And a plane comes by, writing words in the sky. And it said, love you, God. And I thought, look at that. God is prompting people with gifts that can write words in the sky with their airplane to send his message of love to the world, to see him. Uh -huh. And all you had to do was look up. Uh -huh. I've been take, getting some takeout at certain restaurants, and I'm interested to see how the people will approach the car as they come with their food. And I'm kind of nervous. Are we going to touch hands? Are we not? What's going to happen? Should I touch the bag? Should I not? Are you with me? Anyway, they're coming to the car, and I'm kind of there ready to pay. And every single takeout person, person that's running takeout at the restaurants, has been so joyful. They have greeted us with joy, and I have given joy right back. And Amen. I don't know if they know God as their, as their Lord and their rock, but I know that I experienced something through those people. All throughout our community, when we go to the grocery or wherever we go, I'm seeing joy and peace in people's eyes. Sure, I see a random, frantic, panicked person, but I am seeing smiles and people are just glad to be out of their home to go to the grocery store or getting some food or whatever. And I'm kind of experiencing something different when I'm out than what I let my head tell me is going on. Inside, I hear, oh, there's just fear or there's, there's just panic. And then I go outside of my house and I see that people are just happy to be out and they're seeing nature and they're seeing God. They're seeing God in others. They're seeing God in the gifts that people have. They're seeing him in the joy that people bring. We're experiencing a big God right now. Yes, we're experiencing a big health crisis too. Yeah. But I hope that you won't just stare at that. 
I hope that you won't just stare into the face of the health crisis, but that you'll turn your eyes and look for that God that is so big, so strong, and so mighty. Look at Romans 1.20 with me. Look at Romans 1.20 with me. It's going to be up here on the screen. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made. Are you having a hard time finding God right now? Look to his creation. Look out your window. Even if the tree hasn't bud yet, look at its trunk. Look at its branches. Look at its grandeur. Mm -hmm. You see God and what he has already made. Yeah. Amen. And I hope that you are going to be able to say, my God is so big, mm -hmm. even in the midst of a major health crisis. So my God is so big, so strong, and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do is the name of this song that I'm bringing to you tonight. So when we talk about God's bigness, I pray that you will look and say, I see you, God, when you see him. Mm -hmm. But when I think about God being so strong, I think about, okay, when I am tapping into someone that's strong, what am I doing? Oh, I'm asking them to help me. Hey, Eric, can you come get the pickle jar open? Hey, Eric, can you grab this off the top shelf? Hey, Eric, can you pick this up and move this for me? Eric is very strong, much stronger than I am. And I think about the strength of Eric and how I call on him a lot to help me. Help me carry things. Help me lift things. Help me. Help me. And so tonight when I think about a God that is so strong, his strength is there. He wants to help you. He wants to carry for you that which you weren't supposed to carry on your own. And so this past week I was reflecting, and you may have seen on my personal Facebook, I was reflecting on 9-11. In 9-11, the world really kind of took a pause. A different pause than we're doing right now. But we took a pause. And in that pause, we had time to think about what's going to happen. We didn't know. Mm -hmm. Will, we, will it, we survive? Will this break out of war? What, what's going to happen? And so we all had to take inventory of what we wanted if we made it. Well, I hope that you're doing that right now. I hope that you're taking this time not just to catch up on your Netflix, <laughs> but to also take inventory of what might be different after this. Amen. What might you want to change after this? And in so writing that on my Facebook this past week, I also thought about what we brought into this. Mm -hmm. I have this luggage cart because I want it to be kind of symbolic here tonight. A lot of times we live kind of carrying around baggage, backpacks full of emotions and hurts and past experiences, things that we don't want to let go of or things that we do but we just can't seem to drop. And we kind of walk around with this baggage and I don't know about you, but before coronavirus hit, we were living life at mock speed. And I would consider that maybe many of you were living at mock speed as fast as you can go, carrying some heavy baggage. Yeah. Amen. And I've been doing some thinking, and I've been thinking, like, now's a really good time to unpack those bags. Mm -hmm. Now's a really good time to take inventory, because if you've been walking around with a lot of heavy weight, then probably moving into this may have hit a tipping point in you. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was just a little too much. Yeah. So I just want to say, pick up that bag of worry and load it on the car. Pick up that suitcase of control. Mm -hmm. Things out of your control right now? Mine too. And load it on the cart. Pick up that duffel bag of fear and anxiety mm -hmm. and load it on the cart. You see, our strong God, he wants to take those bags and he wants to cast them as far as the east is from the west. He wants to take your fear and he doesn't want to just put it up in your hotel room. He wants to take it and he wants to toss it. And he wants to take your issues of control and he wants to take it and he wants to toss it. We're reminded to cast our cares on the Lord. He cares for us. I think about the men at the 
airport and when they're putting our bags on the suit uh, on the plane i don't love the way they handle our bags sometimes they pick it up and they kind of throw it you've seen that and you're like yeah that was my suitcase and you're just kind of like no and you're hoping your suitcase is in one piece when you get to your destination because you watch it just get thrown but i want to ask you to do this pick up fear i want you to cast it on the lord mm -hmm. he cares for you yes, he does. pick up that anxiety that was already too heavy that's now closing in the walls of your heart and your home and cast it on the Lord. He cares for you. So some of you can place it neatly on the luggage cart, but maybe you, you need to pick it up and you need to cast it on the Lord. He cares for you. He's strong. He's so strong. And he encourages us to cast our cares on him. And when this season is over, this health crisis, you're going to be lighter. And you're going to be able to walk taller and stronger and straighter. And when the weight tries to close back in, just sing. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. And then I want you to take that backpack of worry and I want you to cast it back on him. Amen. And let him take it from there. Amen. So my God is so mighty. I think about a mighty God and how I know that. When I think about God, I don't think puny, do you? I think mighty. Yes. There's much of when I think of the word and the grandeur of God that I think might. I think mighty. But there are times in our lives where it doesn't feel like he's coming through the way we wish he would. But I want to say this, as, as Paige and her family have to work through the grief of losing Papa D, is what they call him. As they work through the grief of this, they know with all their hearts that he would say, my God is so big, so strong and so mighty. And he believed in a mighty God all the way to the end. Mm -hmm. And he's standing, worshiping Amen. that mighty God now with all the saints that have gone before. And so we talk about a mighty God and we talk about how there's nothing he can't do. We're aware. And Papa D was aware that the healing that God can do on earth is mighty. But the healing and the amazement of heaven is also mighty. It shows his might. And so when I step into might tonight and we say there's nothing our God cannot do, I pray that you will know a mighty God no matter what. So speak his name with exuberance. Recognize his might and his power in your life. Pray his might into the world that he may be seen and known by others through you. I love Isaiah 40, 28 through 31. It says this, do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. Mm -hmm. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Mm -hmm. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the mighty Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. Amen. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. His might is such, friends, that he can share his power with each one of us and it won't weaken him. Amen. Yeah. He's mighty. Yes. My God is so mighty. This is the motion for mighty when we do it with the children. So mighty. <laughs> He's so mighty. So let the church be the church. And speak of a mighty God. Amen. Yes, he's a mighty God, but he also wants to be with us, and I get that. But right now I'm going to take you through a few things you can do if you know this mighty God. Those of you that truly know him, call on him and declare his might in our homes, in our country, mm -hmm. in our world. That his power, listen, would stand at our doorsteps, protecting each one of us. Those of you that have seen God do a miracle, and I know there's a quite a few of you listening, speak his might over the sick. Speak his might into hospital rooms right now. Speak his might into this virus, dismantling it. 
Those of you that truly believe that God can raise the dead, speak his might into the dying hope in people and the things of righteousness that are dying because of this health crisis. Do you know, mighty God? Those of you that have struggled with finances and financial hardship and God help you overcome it, pray God's might into the financial situation, into people's homes and into communities, into small businesses like this beautiful hotel. Speak protection over the finances of our nation that is on the brink of despair. Those of you that truly know the heart of God, speak comfort to those that are losing loved ones. Maybe because of this virus. Maybe due to other sickness. Or maybe the baggage got too heavy. And maybe some people are choosing to end it. Yeah. Speak comfort and strength to those that are losing loved ones. That his mighty hand would hold them strong and long. Those of us that believe in a big, strong, and mighty God, may we look to him and point others to him in the grocery store, at the takeout line, on social media. Mm -hmm. Because he is bigger than this virus. He is stronger than the grave. And his might covers the earth. Do you know him? Listen to these lyrics. It's a quote from the song called Graves into Gardens by Elevation Worship. You turn mourning into dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. Mm -hmm. You're the only one who can. Mm -hmm. You turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who can. You're the only one who can. My God is so big, so strong, and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. We see him in the birds chirping. We see him in the takeout line. We can cast our cares on him. And we can cling to a mighty God that will come through even at the last hour, whether it's healing on earth or healing in heaven. We will see his glory because he is so big. He is so strong and he is so mighty. I do believe there's a purpose unfolding right now. So don't lose perspective. Don't let the noise, like we talked about last week, the noise of all the information cause you to lose perspective. There is still purpose unfolding in your home right now, in our communities right now. And when you start to lose perspective, try to remember this. He's a God who turns seas into highways. He's big. He's strong. Mm -hmm. He's mighty. And there's nothing he can't do. Amen. Tonight, as we kind of wrap up our time together, I've asked my dad to sing a song. It's a song that he's been singing for decades, but there's no better time like right now. When we're stepping into the unknown constantly right now, when we're casting our cares on the Lord, when we're not sure what tomorrow's going to look like, when we're trying to just get up and go, you know, our family kind of mentioned this last week is in a unique season. We, um, our lease ended um, it ends Tuesday, actually, at our condo, and we have to be out Tuesday night. And through all the situation right now, we have been able to find another place to land. Maybe we'll land here in this hotel. We don't know. But I believe with all my heart that by tomorrow morning, we will know. Yeah. And that his peace and his freedom and his strength will be when we wake up tomorrow in the decision that we make. And that we will have a place to land tomorrow night. My parents are so generous. Of course we can go there. But we want to know that we know that we know that we're landing where we're supposed to. And so we're just going to keep pressing into a big, strong, mighty God in the middle of it all. Because we can look at nature and we can look at the sky. But do we really know how big God is? He's really, really big. 
yet he's right here, right now. Listen to the words of this song, and I'll come up and wrap up when my dad is finished. watching tonight and you know and you remember who God was and how he came through but you've lost sight and so I just want to pray a prayer for you and I just want to ask you to turn your gaze back to him open yourself up to see him again to see his bigness to see how strong he is and to watch 
his might unfold. Yeah. So I'm going to pray for you. And if that is you, if I'm talking to you and you once knew, but you've lost sight, then if you'll just open your hands and you'll just be with me in this prayer and you'll receive him once again to guide and direct you all the days of the rest of your life. Let's pray together. God, we thank you that we can always come back to the truth that you are so big, so strong, and so mighty. But God, I know that through life, we turn our gaze to things such as jobs and busyness and families and details and finances. And right now we turn our gaze towards what are the right next steps and because of a health crisis. But God, I pray that tonight through this service and even just through those words of that last song, that if anyone's watching, that they've lost sight of you or even stopped looking for you to come through, God, that they would just turn their eyes back to you. God, that they would just open themselves up to see how big you are. That they would look at a bird and not say, what a pretty bird. That they would say, what a big God. Mm-hmm. That they would cast their cares on you and experience freedom and peace and not just say, huh, that felt good, but say, what a strong God I have. Mm -hmm. And that they would see you heal and come through and help them overcome. And they wouldn't just feel strong within themselves, but they'll say, what a mighty God we serve. God, I pray that our gaze would turn back to you, looking to you for answers, looking to you for strength, looking to you for power. And knowing that the healing that you do on earth is as equally powerful as the healing that you do in heaven. And when you don't come through on earth like we thought you would, that what's happening in heaven is just as grand, actually, more. And so God, help us to never lose sight of how big and strong and mighty you are. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for this night. And I pray for those that are praying this prayer with me to turn their eyes back to you, that they would never lose sight again. But if they do, that they would just once again open their eyes and know that you're so big, so strong, and so mighty. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. As we close with this last song, as you place your luggage on the cart, and as you loosen up in your life and put your eyes on God, you'll know that he's amazing and his grace changes you. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that sings. Was love.
you to know tonight that we love you church good night